but I would say you know, like selfishly it was probably one of the best learning experiences, right? Because you yeah. can, you can kind of see like the business in its extremes. Um, and it also in, in a way it did give us like the ability to kind of pause on certain things, you know, like, and yeah. focus on other things that were really important and deliver them. Hey, so uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Nuru Antonov. Uh, so most recently, I just uh, started um, a, a new company called SuperMe. Before that, I was heading the engineering team at, uh, at WhatsApp. Uh, and before that, I led um, several of the organizations at uh, Lyft and Pinterest. Um, and before that, I worked at uh, Hulu, Microsoft, and uh, a few other places. So yeah. That's awesome, man. So. Uh Look, one of the things that I'd love to jump into is to kind of walk through each steps of those of that career. So um, firstly, in terms of like how you thought about it in your personal career, and I know from my side, I'm always fascinated to hear um, what the engineering organizations are like on the inside. Like I, from the outside, I always everyone always imagines that these incredible world-class uh, places because we know the company so well, but I'm sure once you're on the inside, there's things that do well and things that do not so well. So uh, back when you, I guess, starting back at, at Hulu, what was the role and, and how was the engineering org uh, working back? Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, let's see, that was a long time ago. Um, I would say at Hulu, you know, like maybe one of the things that we, we got right is like we were, I would say like at the time we were very much counterculture, you know, like and so if you imagine that was before streaming, was well known. I think it was. I, I was yeah. there right around the time where we still kind of called Clown Co. Um, and um, and I think uh, I, I've met some of the most phenomenal people there. So I think like the density of talent is one of the things that um, you know, like the, really the company got right. Um, and it was also like that that strive to rethink a new, you know, like a new sector. Like what would. Yeah you know, like TV streaming look like in 10, 12, 15 years. Um, yeah. And I think like a lot of the conversations and a lot of the execution that started happening around that time is what streaming is today. Um, but I would say a lot of it was really fun, you know, like um, very, um, I, I would say like uh, at the time it was almost the opposite of a Microsoft, you know, like so no boundaries, you know, like uh, work on a lot of cool things, um, go as fast as possible and deliver impact. Um, and that was incredibly fun. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's easy, it's easy now, um, to look at Hulu and, and we all know it so well, and we know where the industry went. It, it's easy to forget that back in 2010, there was a lot of debate about what streaming would end up being and how the industry would shake up. Yeah. And so. What was the decision to go from Hulu to Pinterest? Was there any reason you decided to make that jump? Yeah, I mean, like, well, so one of the things is um, I was in Seattle, you know, like, and I always yeah. wanted to, um, I wasn't wanting to move to the barrier because it felt like there is a world of difference being in, in the epicenter of things versus, you know, kind of around it. Um, and, and that, yeah, um, and, and, and working with a company that basically has a, its headquarters and, and, and yeah. everything in one place. That was a very big draw. Um, and um, at the time also, like, we were just about to have our first child. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, we're either doing this now um, yeah, yeah. Uh, or it, it, it will probably take a very long time to figure out, you know, like once we settle in. Uh, and yeah. that was one of the decisions in the other or one of the reasons in the other one was actually a, a very good friend of mine uh, Houston, um, he he actually joined um, Pinterest, and so um, so we we both kind of took the jump uh, together. It was that was a it was a great decision in hindsight. Yeah, and this is a constant debate, and there's a lot of people that uh, that we speak to that are spread across the states because they a lot of work with remote teams, and. It's an ongoing debate. Should I go to San Francisco and be at the center of things? Because it's kind of a vague idea. Um, did you find it had the impact on your career and, and what you worked on 
like you were expecting? I would say absolutely yes. Um, and um, I do think we're in a different environment now to where um, the allowing remote work is actually it's like non-negotiable. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but um, but I do think you know there's just no replacement for being in person and just being really immersed into into the ecosystem. Um, you just don't know when a conversation will turn into something productive, you know, like in the future. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these conversations that I've had between 2013 and well, since, um, a lot of them have been pretty formative, you know, like for, mm -hmm. you know, like for me. Yeah. And what did, what were the biggest difference in how Pinterest ran engineering versus Hulu? Yeah. I mean, I would say like when I joined Pinterest, we were still very small. I think I was employee 100, you know, like, and so yep. to me, that creativity and, you know, like that degree of, uh, hey, we're just figuring it out um, was, mm -hmm. uh, was, was kind of a common theme. Like when, when all of a sudden done, I, I would say like specifically on the growth, growth side of things, I felt with Pinterest, it was very clear it was a technology first company. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and that's not to say that the talent at Hulu was not, you know, like world class it was, but with Pinterest, you know, like with, with Hulu, um, if you don't have the shows on your, as part of your inventory, then you really don't have a business. Yeah. Um, and with Pinterest, it was more around like, you know, you're focusing on a broad set of technology. Um, mm -hmm. and if the technology fails, then you don't have a business, you know, like, but that emphasis on, um, like basically being extremely user centric, like really listening to what users want, um, and then really solving things technology first, you know, like that, that probably was one of the things that like over time we found our stride. Um, but I would say like, that wasn't easy. It was two, three years, you know, like where it was, it was difficult to figure out how to describe Pinterest, right? It was like, yeah, what's yeah. this thing that you find inspiration on? Is it single player mode? Is it multiplayer mode? Is it social network? Yeah. Is it like whatever? Um, but, um, but I think like working through that, like ambiguous challenges and, and, and just really thinking through, Hey, like, how do we solve this through technology? I think we had like one of the best recommendation teams, you know, like, and, you know, like yep. one of the best, um, you know, like growth teams as well. Um, and, and, and so just kind of building on that was, um, yeah, it was really different. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really interesting differentiation the is the company driven by the technology or is the technology enable something, you know, enable a new type of business, surprisingly easy to, uh, confuse the two. Yeah. That's actually one of the things that I, you know, like I look really hard, you know, like in, in my career yeah. journey and just in general, you know, like talking to folks is like, I, I think there's wonderful businesses that can be built where technology is an enabler. But there's something yep. different where you're like, just the technology is the product, you know? Um, yep. And, and to your point, it's all about it. it yeah. It's very nuanced in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the next, I mean, the Lyft is one of the classic examples of that. Which, which category do you put Lyft in there? Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. And honestly, I would say I put. I would also put it that like the, you know, like technology first, um, yep. be because, because effectively it is a marketplace, right? It's a real time, yeah. time marketplace. One of the things that actually, one of the things that com comparing, contrasting Pinterest versus, you know, like, um, Lyft, it's almost like, you know, your two sides of the brain, like Pinterest is like your yep. creative side of the brain. And then Lyft yeah. is your like overly analytical, you know, um, yep. part of the brain um but but i would say you know like at least what really mattered is like can you get folks efficiently from point a to point b when they have the needs in real time um and that required very little ui you know like um it's i uh, like that it's yeah. yeah the technology makes it yeah. cheaper the the product is the fact they can do it cheaper yeah exactly but 
but all of the machine learning, all of the uh, systems, you know, like the architecture, being able to do that, um, that, that made it like a, a really big difference. And you can feel it in the, <laughs> you can feel it in the culture and how people actually solve problems. Um, yeah. it was, it was very, very much like it was a lot more rigid, but you kind of have to be because you're dealing with like very financial, you know, yep. uh, you know, yeah, instruments all the way down, uh, where with Pinterest was like very creative. Yeah. That's, it's fascinating. That's where you went though, that the, the product is getting people from one place to another cheaper and more efficiently when you're talking about it being a technology product, I think. It, yeah. Everybody saw Uber and Lyft through the city that they lived in. And I remember the city I lived in at the time when they rolled out, um, it was actually Uber was the, the main player in the city, but they rolled out, um, forgotten what it's called, where you have two people join rides yeah, and you yeah. then get sure, heart, right. heart pressure. Yeah. And a lot of players took a year to be able to replicate that in their product because just technically incredibly difficult to do. Yeah. Uh, and by that point, they were a year behind and the other player had the biggest market share. So it, it was true, like technology made the difference in, in who was winning or losing it. But what, yeah. um, I, I guess you joined Lyft right about, was that at the uh, turbulent time at Uber when Lyft was surging? Or, I mean, you must have at least read it through COVID, right? That seems like an incredibly turbulent time to be at, at Lyft. Yeah, I joined right before IPO. Mm. Yeah, like, and so yeah. I joined when we were really, when Lyft was having the delete Uber moment. Um, yeah. And, um, and then, so that was in 2019. Um, and then the next year is when COVID hit. Um, so, yeah. uh, um, so the next couple of years, you know, like there were really, you know, like, you know, like quite turbulent in terms of yeah. ups and downs. Um, but I would say, you know, like selfishly, it was probably one of the best learning experiences, right? Because you yep. can, you can kind of see like the business in its extremes, um, and it also, in in a way, it did give us like the ability to kind of pause on certain things, you know, like and yep. focus on other things that were really important and deliver them. Just, yeah, look, yeah. Walk, walk, walk me through that process because that that. I mean, I remember ride sharing just being in the papers every day during COVID because of you know, obviously greatly impact. How did you decide what you wanted to focus on at that time? Yeah, I mean, like, I think um, at the time, we, we just kind of went back to like, what's the core of the business? Um, mm -hmm. Because that's, that's kind of like the only thing that you can do, right? Like, it, and um, yeah. And, and really like when, when everything shut down, um, mm -hmm. that gave us a little bit of time to be like, okay, well, we know this is not going to be forever. So what is going to, mm -hmm. ha like what's happening right now? And like, how can we actually make, you know, like the, the future better when things open back up, you know, like how can we have like one of the classic things is we were quite behind on driver incentives, you know, like how we, yep. you know, like how we're we're able to get drivers to the right locations so that we can have a more efficient system. And we completely rebuilt that during COVID. Um, and that was actually pretty powerful um, in terms of just kind of matching, you know, like what Uber stack was. Um, so, so at a yeah. time when sales were dropping through the floor, you took a step back and focused on long-term initiatives. That, that's an incredible amount of discipline. Yeah. I mean, I would say like it was more... We, we had the set of long-term things and, but, but also like from a short-term perspective, we, we had to, there was plenty of things that we had to catch, right? Like, so, yeah. um, it, because we went through the spirit of like, it's closed, it's open, it's closed, mm -hmm. it's open. And then yeah. when you do that, like you end up with this extreme, you know, like the, the market is like either extremely oversupplied, you know, like, or over demanded, um, yeah. And each one of these things, like just from a human perspective, is is very is very difficult, right? Like when you have drivers who depend on, you know, like their livelihood yeah. to be, you know, like uh, riding with with Lyft, and you know, like they're out for hours, but there's no demand. Um, yep. Then that's very difficult, right? Like that's that's kind of like where we have to think about like some short term things, but but we also had it it, that, it did give us a chance to like rethink some of the long term, you know, like bets that we had and catch up on them. And how do you think 
engineering teams are going to run in the future. I assume you're bullish on AI given your shift. Do you think that's going to change the type of team that you build or the type of profile that you hire? Yeah. I mean, I think I've thought about this a lot. You know, um, one of the things that I've seen, you know, with the maturity of technology. So, so for example, at whatnot, in the engineering team, you know, I were about like 220, 225. And, you know, like, I think the shift, um, what we were able to do with that group of people was incredible compared to like 10 years ago, probably 10, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, so I think, um, the, the reason for this is like a lot of what before was done in big tech companies, like internal tools, you know, like a lot of these things have spun out, you know, like to be their own, you know, like standalone products. Yep. And now, you know, like you can pretty quickly go from like a monolith before you had to go from a monolith to kind of like microservices, you know, like and manage the entire thing. And now it's pretty much like you go from monolith directly to third party services that will enable you you know, like in each part of the stack, you know, like, so, you know, if you want like a great AB framework, you know, like Statsig is, is, is mm -hmm. there. And, you know, like we were early partners with them. Um, we integrated them in like a week, um, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and that sell, saved us an incredible amount of time. So we're on the data stack, you know, like kind of a lot of these, um, these, the ecosystem is there. So that, that helps yep. improve a lot of things. And I think. Similarly, AI is probably going to be supercharged, you know, like engineers the same way. It's incredibly, it's incredibly interesting to see how efficient AI is with debugging problems, being able to write tests, mm -hmm. being able to actually like help you through new technology. And, and so, so I think like basically the productivity per engineer is going to go up, mm -hmm. which probably means that like the engineers that you need in order for a team is going to go down. But the interesting part, and this is one of the things that, um, like if you, if you look at like ride sharing, you know, before ride sharing, um, there was congestion in cities, right? After ride yep. sharing came about, you know, like people were like, oh, oh, this is actually going to help congestion, right? Because not a lot of people are going to have like their cars. The traffic expands to fill the available expands, roads, right? right. Yeah. Why? Because you have like more demand, you know, like, and that more demand yeah. is basically taking over. And similar with autonomous vehicles now, like I think China's leading the way, but with mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles, it's the same thing. You get more rides and you get more congestion, um, yeah. uh, because more people are traveling. So I think like likely there's going to be probably one of two shifts. Either the engineering teams are going to stay same size. You know, like, but their output is going to be much higher, um, mm -hmm. or you're going to be able to produce a lot more with a loss of less people, like in a more focused environment. Um, but I do think like there's a lot of folks that think that like AI is going to replace humans, you know, like in engineers, like I don't really subscribe to that. Um, yep. but I do think is it's going to be charge. Yeah. Is that change in efficiency changing the profile of person that you're going to hire like do you go more senior do you go more junior do you just build less squads um does it have any impact in in who you think you are um i would say i think that um i doubt that the composition the team composition is going to change necessarily um yep. but uh, but again like i think I, I would probably say that like, like my bet would be again on efficiency in terms of how teams run. Um, I think that would be pretty difficult to change. Like, but in, t in terms of like their, their, the level of output and like what their goals are, that probably would be like the big go. change. Yeah. Yeah. And look, that, that concept of you know, things expand to fill the available space. We've seen that again and again and again, you know, there was. Yeah. A time where we all dealt with dial-up modem and now we all have super yep. fast internet. What do we do? We stream, stream videos while we're on the bus or in the back of a cab. And yeah. next thing you know, we'll have virtual reality and 3D images, et cetera, et cetera. So it's never ending. Uh, I think it's a really strong point of view. Um, 
Luno, man, uh, thanks so much for the time. Um, where can people find you if they want to follow up or uh, follow what you say? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't. I actually don't have a lot of uh, social media presence, you know, like, but I'm generally on LinkedIn. Yeah. That's that maybe the place to be. Yeah. We'll put it up in the notes. Yeah. Thanks so much, man.